So the trigger point was uh, maybe two or three points. The first point was I had a friend called Moinul Ahmed who would come and visit me and we'd have discussions. He, he wouldn't. He lived in the same borough as me, I believe, and I think it was the same borough. And we'd just have discussions on these issues. Who gave me? He gave me this book called a booklet called Faith in Progress. I don't know if it even exists anymore. I just found it so fascinating. It was such a brilliant mm-hmm. book at that time. Um, it just made sense. It was like here's a creator. It was like a form of the argument from contingency. And this is why the Qur'an is from God. And it was basically in the inference to the best explanation of why the Qur'an is from the divine. It couldn't come from an Arab. It couldn't come from a non-Arab. It couldn't come from Muhammad Sassam. Therefore, it comes from God. And for me, that just triggered me in some way. Now, I'm not saying the arguments in there were the most robust or philosophical, full of references. No, but it triggered my fitwa because in the Islamic tradition, we believe everyone has an innate disposition that's been, been created by God. And within that has forms of proto or primary knowledge that God exists and that he's worthy of worship. But that innate disposition gets clouded. That booklet happened to uncloud some aspects to awaken the truth within, right? So I read that. And then also I used to read this book called Islam in Focus. Mm-hmm. And it was such a nice book. It was, I think it was written by an Egyptian professor, but I think he was a professor in America or something. I don't even remember the contents of the book, but it's a green book. And subhanAllah, you know, he's, he died, right? Probably before I became Muslim, I believe. And, you know, it just goes to show if, if someone has ikhlas sincerity, he could get all the reward for the book that I've written, for my whole life, for my family, for all the good deeds that I've done. If, you know, I'm not saying I've done many good deeds, but even my intentions or organizations I've helped run or an organization I've helped run, he gets all the reward, right? Just because he wrote that book and he died before I even became Muslim. So it goes to show the importance of ikhlas, having sincerity, doing things for the sake of Allah. Because if you don't, you know, all of, all of the potential great reward could be lost. Anyway, so that book was part of the journey as well. And then another part was the same brother. He basically reminded me about death. Now, you know, Al-Ghazali, the 11th century polymath and theologian, he wrote about death. He's got a whole volume on death. I think it's in his Ihya. And he discusses that, you know, death can facilitate good things. There's many benefits in reflecting on death. Because, look, you have to think about something, yeah? We have to face our personal apocalypse. (laughs) We're not going to be here, man. We're going to die soon, now, later. We don't know. But one fact is true that we're not going to be here one day. And you need to see life through the prism of death. And it shouldn't create a negativity. It should catapult you existentially and emotionally and intellectually to think about the very important questions. Because, wallahi, if you have death in the forefront of your mind, you can't really argue anymore. You've got bigger things going on. I remember one sheikh, one scholar said there was a guy putting petrol or fuel in his Lamborghini or something. Some guy smashed his car and he just looked at the, 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 the damage and then just drove off, didn't deal with it. Why? Because that guy was probably dealing with far more greater things in his mind. And that's why if you think about death, you don't become petty anymore. You forgive very quickly. Um, you, you, you know, you don't squabble about small things. Your life has a, a if you if you have a akhara focused, a hereafter focus, your life becomes a little bit more meaningful and less petty. Anyway, so he, he, he spoke to me about death. And that, for me, just created this kind of meaningful existential realization that the, the things that I believe to be true now, which is God exists and the Quran is from Allah, then I need to do something about it because death is around the corner and life, it, you need to take life seriously. So uh, after that, I think the day after, it was a Friday, and then the day after on a Saturday, I went to Regent's Park Mosque. Well, I think it was October the 5th, 2002, and I took the Shahada. And uh, <laughs> since then, it's been 18 years, I think. <laughs>